Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So recently I've had some obsession with power meters and given the fact that lab level power meters are extremely expensive. So I've been researching cheaper alternatives. Now you may have seen my video on where I made my own diode RF detector, which did work out pretty well. But at the same time, I also saw this on AliExpress. So after placing an order and waiting a couple of weeks, this arrived through the post. Now this is an RF power meter and apparently it's version five. Not sure what happened to one through four, but this is version five. It supports a maximum input of zero dB, right down to a minimum of minus 60 dBm. It also supports a massive frequency range of between 100 kilohertz all the way up to 10 gigahertz. Now a closer look reveals it's been built into a solid lump of aluminium, machined out to fit the single board, which we'll take a look at in a moment. On one end, we have the USB-C connection, which connects to your computer using the supplied USB cable. The other end, we find an SMA female, which you would connect to the device under test. Now remember that this device has a maximum input of zero dBm, so it's advisable to always use an attenuator between the power meter and your device under test. The size of the attenuator will be determined by how much power your transmitter is emitting. An offset can be entered into the software, which we'll look at shortly. With the top lid off, we can see that this power meter is just one PCB and has been fitted into the well-built aluminium case very snugly. Not exactly many parts, so if you treat this with care, it should last some time. So let's hook it up to the computer and perform some RF measurements. The first test I will perform will be with the Adam Pluto. And then we will perform a test with the Ant SDR E200 running the Pluto firmware. What will be interesting to see will be the power output from both of these devices on different frequencies to see how they compare. Now I already have an idea of what they should be emitting, but let's find out. Now the software is available from a download link on the seller's page, but it was quite a mission to obtain. In fact, a friend of mine on the DATV group that I'm a member of sent me a version of the software, which is slightly different to the version provided by the seller, but we'll take a look at both. The first thing you'll need to do is install the driver so that it shows up correctly within Device Manager as a COM port. The Windows driver is supplied with the software download, so you don't need to go hunting anywhere else for it. Once the driver is installed and the RF power meter is plugged in, you should see the device listed in your Device Manager with a description of an STM Electronics virtual COM port. Just make a note of the COM port number. I'll first show you the software which comes from the supplier. Now, this is extremely simple to use, although some of the wording and text is slightly off, but I believe this is mainly due to the original application having Chinese text, so English text uses more space, or I could just be making that up, who knows. Anyhow, you can still clearly see the text that's important. First, we choose the COM port number that we saw in Device Manager and just press Connect. The software will now start to show values, changing as it performs its sweeps. What's interesting here is that we need to enter the frequency in which the RF power meter will sample. Now this is good because it means that either in software or on the device, there's some kind of lookup table of sorts which calculates the correct power level given the set frequency. As I'll be using a 20 dB attenuator, I'll set an offset of 20 dBm. This then cancels out that attenuator for a correct reading. Now using SDR console, I'll set it to 2405 MHz or 2.4 gigs and set the modulation to FM. With the power slider all the way to maximum, we can see an output. Now according to this version five power meter, that's around 1.5 to two milliwatts. Now I was kind of expecting that. The software records the maximum and minimum readings, so you can read the peak level that was reached during your transmissions. So if we now change the frequency down to one gigahertz on SDR console and then enter one gigahertz into the RF power meter software, we can see an output of around 3.5 milliwatts coming from the Adam Pluto. Notice here that I still have the attenuator offset still entered. Now let's change the Adam Pluto for the Ant SDR E200 
to see what kind of output power we get at 2.4 GHz. With the device's frequency change to 2.4 GHz on both SDL console and the power meter, I will start transmitting an FM carrier. Here we can see an output close to 10 milliwatts, which is exactly what I was expecting. At 1 GHz, we see an output of around 40 milliwatts, which was actually quite surprising and shows that it's a powerful little device. Now, the other software package which I mentioned earlier, which my friend sent me, looks like this. In my opinion, this looks a little nicer, and I quite like the power over time graph that is displayed in real time. Not entirely sure where this comes from, but if anyone wants it, then let me know and I'll upload it to a free download source. The software is very similar to the other software we previously showed, but it does have some other controllable features, such as the sample rate in which it receives the data from the power sensor. What's also nice is that the commands used to program the device is shown on screen, along with the data that's received. Now this is now making me think that I could connect this to a Raspberry Pi and control it from Node-RED for remote power monitoring. Now if you're wondering about how accurate this power meter is, then to the best of my knowledge, it's extremely accurate, at least for CW. Another friend of mine, Gary ZS6YI, has performed some tests against calibrated equipment using CW, and it's pretty much bang on. However, I was told that this power meter was not at all accurate when measuring wide transmissions like those from DATV, so no good for monitoring my amp during a DATV transmission. However, I could measure my amp if I was to emit a CW carrier. Anyway guys, there we go. That's the RF power meter version five USB controlled from your computer. Now let me know if you've got one of these yourself and if you've tested it against proper calibrated equipment. I'll be interested to know your results. As always, I'll leave a link in the description of where you can purchase this from if you're interested in getting one. At the time of making this video, it was around 40 UK pounds. So not exactly expensive. I've seen similar items like this going for more than 500. So it's definitely a bit of a bargain. Anyway, guys, until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.